In my last video looking at the Spider-Man Origins Signature Series, I started by focusing on the Spider-Man releases as part of this line. And today I'm going to turn my attention to the enemies or the villains that were released as part of this lineup. Now, surprisingly, despite having quite a number of entries in this line, there were only a handful of villains released, which is doubly surprising considering that Spider-Man has a fairly extensive and very popular rogues gallery, and most of whom had featured in films by this point. Instead, and again oddly for a Spider-Man line, there was a focus on other Marvel superheroes such as Wolverine or Captain America or even Daredevil. But of the handful of Spider-Man villains we did get, there's a couple of real standouts. So the first figure I'm going to take a look at today is the 8-inch Doctor Octopus. Now I must say as a collector of the Marvel Famous Covers line, I'm doubly pleased to have this Doctor Octopus because, well, he never got a release in that line and we did get quite a few Spider-Man villains. Looking at the packaging, of course it has continued what we see as the brand. We have the Spider-Man Origins logo with that image of Spider-Man which is nice and colourful. We have the head of the character on the side panel which is that diagonal slant and we have that window display there of Dr. Octopus in all his glory. And all in all, this is pretty attractive and it's quite presentable. On the side panel we have a couple of images of Dr. Octopus from across the years from various different comic books and different looks here as well. So this is uh, pretty nice, this is quite attractive and again displays very nicely with other figures in their packaging if you want to put them on the shelf. And then finally on the reverse we have a nice big image of Dr. Octopus, the figure himself, on display there. A little bit of bio about him and his history which is great and of course we can see some of the other figures in the line as well. I have to say, first impressions with this figure when you get him out of the packaging is just, he's very, very pleasing. He's nice and colourful, he's very bright, and overall, he looks really impressive. Uh, there was definitely always going to be a danger that these arms could look silly, but I'm pleased to say, I think they pulled it off. Now, of course, across the years, Dr. Octopus has been interpreted and reinterpreted and reimagined, so it can be difficult to come up with a single look for Dr. Octopus and what should he look like when it comes to a head sculpt, but I think they've done a pretty nice job here. I think this is a pretty solid head sculpt. This definitely uh, looks like Dr. Octopus to me, and uh, I'm very happy with it. And again, we can see there's a nice paint wash running through the hair, so there's a bit of brown and black. gives it a bit more texture and looks quite nicely done. The body sculpt is just recycled from what we've seen on previous figures, however with Dr. Octopus the big difference of course is he has those arms. So around his chest they've given him a rubber tube which serves two functions. On the one hand it makes him look a bit more rotund as he should do, he should be a lot more round, a bit fatter than the other characters in this line and it also helps support the arms that plug into the side there. Now, I think we could probably argue whether the arm should be in the side or on his back. However, I'm pretty happy with this. There is one caveat, though, is that obviously his arms do look a little bit hunched. They do seem to uh, bunch up above the, uh, the, the, the metallic arms. Uh, so this can look a little bit clunky at the top there. But nevertheless, I think overall they've struck the right compromise and this looks pretty decent. He has the standard hard plastic hands and obviously cuffs there, which the, uh, the green of the... the cloth costume that fits in very snugly, it looks really good, looks seamless and uh, this works very very nicely. Of course they are moulded in that yellow plastic so it looks extra colourful and bright and we can see obviously the tentacles as well are made of a rubber, they have a wire inside which makes them articulated but we'll look at that a bit more in a moment. And much like his hands and cuffs, of course his feet and his ankles are also cast in a solid plastic as well which again is in that yellow mold which looks pretty good, very striking and uh, yeah it looks very seamless so this works very very well on this figure, this looks really appropriate. And here we can see a closer look at those arms there, we can see the, the rubber arms plug into the plastic uh, cuffs that uh, slot into the, the side of the body there and they might look a little bit clunky, a little bit obvious uh, but I think they work very well and as I said I think this is a, a perfectly decent compromise between aesthetic and functionality. Now the articulation scheme is exactly the same as we saw on the previous Spider-Man but I will run through it again here in case you haven't seen that video. So he has a swivel at the neck so he can spin his head from side to side right the way around but it doesn't move up or down. There's no ball joint so he can't nod his head at all. He does have ball joints in his shoulders however so he can lift his arms up and he can kick them out which is pretty good. Now there is a single joint at the elbow so he can bend his arm to about 90 degrees and there is a pin swivel at the wrist meaning he 
he can bend his wrist forwards and backwards and of course spin it right the way around. He's also got extra articulation of the knuckles so the hand can be a fist or it can open up to be an open hand as well. Now as I mentioned before because of the way the tentacles come out the side there, it does mean that his uh, actual arm articulation is a little bit more compromised. It does look a little bit silly when you put them over them. That said, he does have articulation in the tentacles, so that, of course they swivel right the way around, but the tentacles themselves are in a wire encased in a rubber, so you can mold them into pretty much whatever pose you want them to be in, which is fantastic. And even the claws at the end are fairly malleable and flexible, although they don't hold their shape, which is pretty cool. Now he does also have a ball joint in the waist so he can spin from side to side, he can arc left and right and he can bend forwards and backwards. He's got hinged hips so his legs can kick out to the side, they can kick forwards, they can kick backwards. And once again, there is another single joint at the knee, so of course that bends to 90 degrees. And then there is finally another pin swivel at the ankle there, meaning of course the foot can rotate right the way around, but it can also arc forwards and backwards too. All in all, I have to say I love this figure. He's really, really very impressive in hand and delivers much more than I was expecting. I didn't know how they could possibly pull off a Dr. Octopus. For years, I've had this fantasy of them being able to release a figure that actually had telescopic arms. I've never actually seen that done, uh, but I've seen various different approaches uh, in many figures. But I think this one works really well. I really like having the wire in those arms and being able to mold them. And I think yeah, certainly there is a bit of a compromise when it comes to the uh, articulation of of his actual arms but that said I, I think this works perfectly well and it's one I'm very happy to live with because overall this is a really colorful fun figure to have. Next up we have the Punisher and you might be saying well the Punisher isn't strictly a villain. No but he's not strictly a hero either. He's that somewhere in between uh, and this is based on his first appearance when he was really introduced as another villain for Spider-Man really. Uh, so I'm really delighted to have him. I'm somewhat surprised they released his character over so many others uh, <laughs> that they could have chosen. However, as I said, I'm a big fan of this character and uh, I think they've done a very, very nice job of him. And much like Dr. Octopus, I don't believe they've ever made one in this scale before. Certainly, they didn't in the Marvel Famous covers line. So this is definitely exciting for me. The packaging and the branding is pretty much what we've seen before. We have the character's head on the side panel, we have that big window display, and of course, we have the Spider-Man Origins. Now, there is a slight difference with this figure because behind him you will see a comic book, and we'll look at that a bit closer in a moment. Meanwhile, on the side panel, again, we have three images of the Punisher from across uh, different artists and different years. Uh, you can definitely see some 90s art there. We can see some of the early 2000s. That's uh, clearly a Steve Dillon image at the top, which is absolutely brilliant. And then on the reverse of the packaging, we have a very nice image uh, of this figure. Very cool angle they've gone for there. Although I must say, I think the head sculpt is radically different to what we actually ended up with. Um, but again, very nicely done. Instead of seeing other figures this time in the series, we actually have an image of the comic book in which the Punisher made his first appearance. And... They also include it in the packaging, so we get a reprint of that first appearance or the first meeting of the Punisher and Spider-Man, which of course is a very famous cover. Uh, quite a nice touch. I think this is a, a cool idea for anyone who's new or maybe uh, just wants to have a collector's item <laughs> reprinted. Um, it, this, is a, this is definitely a nice colourful touch. I like this a lot. So moving on to the figure himself, again it is pretty much the standard body we've seen before so no real surprises there but he is very crisp, very clean and it looks very very nice. Now I do think the head sculpt is interesting, clearly they went with a different sculpt than they had originally in the prototype and that image that we see on the back of the packaging there. Uh, this looks a lot softer to me, uh, it's less grizzled uh, than the original prototype head. I think this is perfectly fine in truth. I think it, obviously it's it's a clean shaven version of the character. No problems with that. That was his look for many years. Uh, I think this is a pretty decent likeness. I think we could accept that this is the Punisher. If I had a small gripe with it, I would say that maybe the head looks a little bit too elongated, a little bit too narrow and thin, uh, but that's a very minor thing. Overall, I think this looks pretty decent. I think they've done a very, very nice job of the transfer that's gone onto his chest. Like I said, that skull looks really crisp and clean. And uh, we also have the added uh, utility belt there, which uh, has some of the teeth in, uh, which looks really cool. But if we move that to the side, we can see the rest of the teeth on the actual logo. So I think this is very effective, very authentic to what we see in the comics. And I think it looks really good. 
And again, no surprises when it comes to the hands and the gauntlet. Of course, they are just molded in that white plastic, but it looks really clean and crisp and bright. And uh, this works a treat, I think. Likewise, we see the exact same thing on the boots. So no surprises here, but it all looks really good uh, and everything looks really tight and uniform, which is fab. Now, something I did notice with this Punish figure is that he seems to have a little bit of extra articulation. That might be my imagination, but he seems to have articulation in the chest or the upper abdomen, where there definitely seems to be a ball joint there that allows him to move from side to side, move forwards and backwards, and arc uh, left and right as well, as well as having the ball joint in the waist. So it definitely feels that the Punish has got a little bit extra. Certainly, we don't have that in a Dr. Octopus, but perhaps that's to do with the rubber band going around his body. But that's not all, because the Punisher also comes with an accessory. He comes with his big assault rifle, uh, which looks really cool. I think they've done a very nice job of the sculpt of this. There's not really much detailing when it comes to the paint apps, which is a shame. It would have been nice if it had been maybe a couple of different tones, maybe some silver or white or a brown wash somewhere. Uh, it is just moulded into that one black plastic, but it looks pretty decent. No issues with the sculpt. The only thing I can really think to nitpick is that it the handle does seem to be extraordinarily large and quite triangular. Uh, I'm not quite sure why uh, it seems unnecessarily big, but that said, he doesn't really struggle to hold it. It still fits in his grip quite nicely. And even better, he can grip it with both hands if you persevere. And uh, I think this looks pretty cool. Uh, again, only thing I can really say is that the gun maybe looks a little bit too big. It looks a little bit out of scale there. Like it might fit better with a 12 inch figure uh, rather than an 8 inch. So this uh, does look a little bit curious, um, but it just about gets away with it, I think. I think this is okay. And all in all, I think they've done a really nice job with this figure. Again, much like Dr. Octopus, I think he's really impressive from a figure and a character I wasn't really expecting too much from. I think they've really pulled out the bag to produce a really nice looking, really fun figure. So aside from Dr. Octopus and the Punisher, they did also release a Green Goblin. Now this figure looks to be quite nice in the main. We can see that he comes with his glider and also a pumpkin bomb or two, which is pretty cool. And he's got obviously his little purple satchel there as well. And from what I can tell, the expression on the face, the head sculpt, looked to be pretty good, pretty accurate to what we'd expect from the Green Goblin. So I think this looks like quite a nice figure. The only thing I would point out is that clearly the prototype looked significantly different. Now the head sculpt I think is the same, but obviously painted a much uh, brighter green. The eyes on this version obviously is black whereas on the actual figure they're yellow which is much better I have to say but I must confess that I do think the colorings of the costume are a little better on the prototype I like that the green is a lot more luminous uh, it's a lot it seems to have a sort of metallic sheen to it I think that would have been really cool and I much prefer that shade of purple in the gloves and in the body and I like that the satchel and belt are a, a different tone they're obviously like more of a fuchsia color here uh, which I think would have been quite nice uh, to have on the actual figure because in reality the final product looks a lot more homogenized we do see uh, some effect of that sort of scale male on the arms and legs but it's a much uh, darker green it matches much better to the uh, the face paint though i must say and the pebbles fine it but there's significantly much less contrast between uh, the pebble and the satchel and the belt and on the main body. So all in all, I think this looks like a pretty decent figure, but perhaps might have benefited from being a slightly brighter, slightly more colourful. And then finally, a few years later, when it was part of the Marvel Legends line, the Marvel Legends signature series rather than Spider-Man Origins, they did also release a Sandman. Now, again, I don't have this figure. I've never owned him, so I have to go based on images I found on the internet, which may or may not be uh, the best source to judge. But I have to say, I think this looks pretty cool. I think they've made an interesting choice. I'm not sure what I like that they give him that big <laughs> base hand. It looks a little bit lopsided. I'm not sure how that would work in reality, whether you'd always be leaning to the side or falling over as a result uh, but I think you know again quite an interesting character to bring into the line really appreciate that effort and uh, is one that hadn't seen life in a nine inch scale before as far as I know so this would have been uh, really fun to add into the collection so there you have it there's my whistle stop tour of the spider-man origins eight inch or was it nine inch line of action figures uh which are a pretty fun line and all in all and i think that the villains represent some of the best i definitely think these both of these figures here uh definitely outshine the spider-man uh both spider-man in the line i have to say uh their costumes their articulation everything about these figures works the way it should and they're really fun to have in the collection so if you haven't got these and you're curious i would definitely recommend picking them up Thank you.
If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and remember to subscribe as there'll be plenty more videos soon.